Hi everybody, this is Matt with another video about InDesign and InDesign yearbooks. Now, there's a lot to be said about InDesign. People always say, well, it's real world education. It really helps you learn things that you'll really use in real life. A real program that helps you problem solve for the future. And there's a lot of benefits sometimes to using um, other programs. I mean, I know for a lot of schools that can't afford computers or the computer situation is not... Um, is not great for whatever reason, they only have Chromebooks or, or things like that, where you have to use an online program. And you know, there's plenty of good online programs. I have many schools myself that I have helped build yearbooks. And as an advisor myself, I built many yearbooks using online programs. But nothing beats InDesign. Not for the quality, not for the education, not for anything. And there's good reason for that because obviously InDesign is what every book and every magazine and anything that ends up in print is going to be made in. And it should be because it's awesome. And so I'm just going to show you really quickly what it looks like when I have my high schools and universities and yes, even a few uh, elementary schools uh, using InDesign to build their yearbooks. This is what it looks like on the user end. Um, I'm not going to show you uh, how to download the different softwares. This is really just so you can get familiar with the concept of what does it look like when I build my when I build my yearbook using uh, InDesign. Now, for starters, you need a real computer. Now, maybe there'll come a day where there's a web app for InDesign, but for right now, you have to have a real computer with a hard drive that can download the Adobe Creative Cloud. And with the Adobe Creative Cloud comes a cloud service itself. So technically, uh, you give your students the Creative Cloud, you give them access, they can actually build their entire yearbook using their cloud service. There's a folder that syncs down to their computer, uh, but you can do this with anything. So you start with a shared folder. So this can be Google Drive, OneDrive, uh, I like box.com is my favorite cloud service, but whatever your favorite cloud service is, this can be done on any computer. And we're gonna sync as a class, now whether you're doing a yearbook, a magazine, a newspaper, or just some other project with other people involved, you just have to have a shared folder. This can be on the Adobe Creative Cloud. They give like 100 gigs to every person, plenty to do a yearbook project, or pretty much any other project. Um, and so you share that folder among all of you. And this is what it looks like once you have that folder shared on your computer. Now I'm using a program called Adobe Bridge. It comes in a sense free with any other purchase you make from Adobe. So if you have an Adobe InDesign license, you'll get Bridge as well. Uh, it's basically another form of Finder. Um, Finder is, or you know, for a PC, Windows File Manager or File Explorer. When I look at my files here on the yearbook, same thing, you have your pages, and when I go into the yearbook pages themselves, I see all my pages here. Pretty cool. If you're familiar with yearbooks, you know that this is kind of what an online yearbook looks like. You can see both sides of your pages, you know who's working on what, you can assign pages to people and color code them for organization purposes. I know the greens are ready to go, the purples were still waiting on information, and the reds mean that there's a problem or a correction that needs to take place. This is just how this one school happens to color code their files. The cool part about these colors is that when I apply a color, or a label, as it's known, uh, to any one of these files, everyone can see it. Whether you are on a PC or a Mac, um, it works cross-platform, which is great. Students can work on the yearbook at home and they can work at the yearbook at school. So you can log in, if you, have a, if you give a user license to a student, they can actually log in on two computers simultaneously. So they can actually log on and use uh, their yearbook. If you were to use the Creative Cloud, uh, this Creative Cloud program here, there's actually a uh, file syncing, right? So you can have your, um, you can have, like I mentioned earlier, uh, your file that you're syncing with your school can be located uh, just right there with the Creative Cloud. So you can call your high school yearbook, whatever. This is shared with nine people. I can share this file with all the students in the class. And so the teacher would, in a sense, own this folder, but they would all have access to it where you would keep your photos and images. You can also place your images directly from the cloud, which is really cool. So if you have a computer and you don't want to take up a lot of space on it, you can actually, uh, when you're building your yearbook, just place these photos straight from the cloud and don't have to have them actually synced onto a computer. But this is the basic look of the of the of the program. Now, when I do InDesign for kid for students for high school especially, 
I generally will put templates on the page for them. So they'll start with templates, whatever their titles are, we'll have put those titles in there. And I also do the portrait pages for the schools as well, um, unless they want to do it for whatever reason. Um, just find it easy for me to do it. Um, and, and it just makes the process go so much smoother, especially I find psychologically on the first day you're learning the program, you have templates on the page. You know, There are fonts and templates you chose um, that fit the theme of that particular design. So this is basically what it looks like. And notice here, not just the label, but I can also tag keywords. So for example, let's say I'm Mia and I know I have a deadline coming up on the first. So over here in keywords, I say, well, Mia is like, well, just show me my pages and show me the pages due December 1st. So now Mia sees just her pages and just her pages that are due December 1st. So she can work on these and say, look, oh, I got one page, I'm still missing something. Could put a label on it, send it back to the editor. So there's a lot of ways to customize and use a simple program bridge. Now this works with any kind of file. So you can imagine what real world implications a program like Bridge could have on somebody's workflow. Being able to tag photos, to label files, um, and sort them and filter them. Uh, this can have uh, tons of great real world expertise, which is one of the reasons why I just love using real uh, educational tools or real software products that can be used for something other than a yearbook or a magazine or a newspaper. You can use this to sort any kind of file um, and link it up. Just to give you a quick look uh, on the inside, when I double click on a particular page, there's my template, uh, there's my pictures. I can drag and drop new pictures onto these pictures. I can click on my text box and type in my, my text into my, into my uh, yearbook. So it shows me my photos here. If I was to place a photo from the cloud, which I can show you kind of quickly how to do that here. I'm sure I got a couple little photos here on the cloud. If I grab one of these photos, which are located on the cloud, and I pull it down here into the yearbook. Let's say I place it down here. And I place this photo in here. When I go to the links panel, it'll actually show me, see that this one is actually placed from the cloud. But it still tells me that my dots per inch. So I know I got a thousand dots per inch. Um, and that's one of the real keys to having a real program. Like when I want to see what this is going to look like, I'm not looking at a web browser. I'm seeing the real image. What I just did there was a print preview basically. So now I, I blew this page up and I can really see what those images are looking like. Are they crisp, are they clear, are they edited correctly? It just makes for a better design yearbook. Um, and it shows me all that information, the dots per inch right there, which just make for a better looking yearbook. I hit file save and within a few seconds, this, this file is updated on everyone's computer to see the edits that I just made. Um, all right, well that was a quick overview of how I do InDesign yearbooks. Obviously, there's a lot more steps involved. Uh, generally, I meet with the students, we pick the theme, we pick the colors, we pick a lot of those concepts. And then afterwards, we get their master pages together or their template, their blank template pages. And we get in there and we show them how to use InDesign and watch them rock and roll. And they always never cease to amaze me. And oftentimes I find some of the best tips are the ones that they come up with, whether it's the way they use Google Sheets or whether they take surveys using um, Google Sheets or Google Surveys and, and put those into the books. So I love watching kids problem solve in real life using real tools that they can use for the rest of their life. One of the reasons why I will always advocate for InDesign yearbooks, especially over any kind of online program that you'll never use for anything else other than this one project that you happen to be working on, Where's the fun in that when you can have a lifetime skill set that will follow you the rest of your life? Hey, like and subscribe my videos if you like to learn more about design, in design, or just yearbooks and student publications. Follow along, enjoy your conversations, your comments, and thoughts. I appreciate it so much, and until next time, bye.